So the last time you guys saw this car, you saw this all blown out. This is all the work that Sean's been doing the last week. As you can see here, he's fully reinforced the weld all the way around because this, again, is that early series car, so it's a single layer wall, very weak. Beautiful work, you can see the all metal over the welds to protect the welds. Now here, you can see how we reinforce the shock tower because the shock tower is notorious for coming apart. You can see all these little spot welds. After the shock tower is taking a beating, over, the, over time, this begins to split away. So we've re, it's a good idea to reinforce all this stuff, which is what the factory recommended to do in the later, later series cars when they began to have problems because of this. The videos. We've been pretty busy getting uh, the floor out of this thing. The problem with buying an Alpha is that you gotta check and make sure that the floorboards are pretty good. If not, it's pretty labor intensive to take one out. Fortunately, this customer has a parts car that he was able to take this floor pan out. The comment he made to me when he pulled this out is, that was really hard. We know. So, This is the old floor. You can see how many spot welds are on this thing. This takes a long time to pull the floors out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fix up this floor pan for him. We're gonna install it back into his car. And like I said, the good thing is that he's got that parts car because he's gonna be able to save a couple bucks. So remember, if you're trying to buy an Alpha and you know you have to replace the floors each quarter because they come in quarter sections, it takes approximately 20 hours so that's 80 hours for the entire floor to replace. Okay, so this looks a little bit extreme and for the most part, it probably kind of is extreme. Um, it is more common that the rear end of one of these has been hit than it is that they haven't been hit. Um, and sometimes you have to go through this level of uh, cutout in order to make it right. Now we're gonna be putting in new trunk floor in this and that's all fine and well. But um, if you're looking to buy a GTV, there's a clear way you can either A, avoid this, or B, at least get the price down because of something like this, okay? Now there's a couple things you need to know. If a, GTV has ever been rear-ended. The bigger problem you're going to have is, is right in the middle of the wheel arches in the rear, there's going to be a crease that happens. If you see a car that has some obvious damage to the trunk, like for example, right where the rear apron is, directly below the bumper, you should be able to see resistance welds. If you don't see those resistance welds, that means it's been filled in with body filler. If it's been filled in with body filler, odds are the trunk or the rear end of the car has been hit. Okay, so with that said, when these things are hit, they buckle right over the wheel arches. When that buckling happens, that is the new metal memory for the rear end of the car, and it will not go away. It's an extensive process to remove that memory from the trunk. Why is this relevant? Well, the first time you put a couple of pieces of luggage in the trunk and you hit a speed bump, you're going to reappear with the buckling over the wheel arches. It's kind of a big problem. But, if you're looking at a GTV, you can't really tell if the, the rear end has been hit or not, because sometimes these can get pretty well hidden. There's always a tall tale sign, we're going to show you in a minute what it looks like. But before we do that, we want to show you how, more, how much more complicated this actually is. The trunk floor, there isn't an exact replacement for this trunk floor, okay? There is a general replacement, but it needs to be modified to accommodate a GTV. So we're going to come over here and show you what that looks like. Now Sean's been cutting out the existing floor. This is the replacement floor. If you just look at them, you can tell they're distinctly different. Okay, so this one's gonna have to be modified in order to make it look like that one. <clears throat> it has flanges that are flared up instead of folded down. It doesn't have a rear flange at all. So you're gonna have to incorporate that. That rear flange is relevant because you need it in order for the rear apron to, to weld to it. Right about now, you can see how extensive and how expensive it gets to make this right. So when you're looking at buying a GTV, you really want to pay attention to the trunk because again, 
these cars had significant braking ability at a time which most cars in America had twice the size, twice the weight, and far less braking capability. So most Americans weren't used to the, the brake zone that this one can close down on, so that's why a lot of them got rear-ended. But, again, if you're really suspect whether there's something wrong with the floors, we're going to show you the telltale signs you know, that will always tell you whether it's been rear-ended or not. On any given Alpha, it doesn't matter whether it's a Spider, a GTV, or a Super, they all have this rear trunk support beam. If the car has ever been rear-ended, that beam effectively is always broken away. Somebody attempted to repair this. You can see the beam has been shunted, but you can see a patch piece was trying to be made right here. Okay, so this was obviously had an impact that was approximately about an inch deep into the rear apron. That's one thing you can always find. The other thing you can always find, because nobody ever fixes it, is right here behind the rear spring perch. This area right here should be perfectly squared. It should not have any deviation to the walls whatsoever. This one has a mild buckling. Sometimes we've seen these where they're so crushed that they're way back here somewhere. This one has a mild deviation here, fairly straight there. And on this side, it's buckled to the inside. Okay, so what this is telling you is this was actually rear-ended from the driver's side rear and pushed to the passenger side rear. Okay, because this buckles like a horseshoe in the direction of the impact. If you have those two items right there, you can now safely assume that the trunk isn't nearly as good as it should be. And uh, that is your how to buy a GTV uh, tech tip for the day. Okay, so in some of the videos that we've been focusing on lately, what we've been showing you is the key things to look for on a GTV if you're looking to buy one. The car that Sean's working on right now, that completely blown out rear end section, is something that can be somewhat noted of if you know what to look for. If you're looking at a GTV and it doesn't matter what year it is, and it has a rear bumper on it, you need to do the best you can to look underneath the bumper because the bumper comes in right here. You can't see in this video, but there are about 24 to 30 resistance welds right there. Little dimples, if you will. If you don't see those little dimples, that means that there's body filler there. If there's body filler there, it's most likely because the car has been rear-ended. As we said a few times before, um, these cars had incredible braking capabilities. At the time when these were on the, the road as new, uh, your standard U.S. car didn't have that equal braking capability. So. Um, these cars got rear-ended quite often by the heavier, slower uh, braking cars of the United States. So that's why you've seen a lot of these rear-ended. So if you don't see this, the, the dimpling effect back here, then you need to know there's probably something else going on. Now we're, we're going to show you a little bit later what to look for and what causes that. But now we're going to come around the side and show you where it happens. By the way, this car does have rear dimpling, so it's never been rear-ended. But if the cars have been rear-ended, by design, it will literally buckle right about here. Depending on the severity of the buckle, it can go from just right here all the way up, okay? The only way you're ever gonna get that out effectively is by once pulling the metal out. Then you have to superheat this area, kind of harden it to recreate a new metal memory, which will not necessarily prevent, but certainly make it much more difficult for this to buckle, because this is what's gonna happen. If you have a car that had this buckling issue and nobody has heated and treated this process, what's going to happen is, is the very first time you put some luggage on this and you go over a speed bump, that buckle is going to pop right back out. Okay, so it's, uh, it's something you need to know because just because it may have been fixed, if it hasn't been thoroughly fixed, it is most likely going to happen again. Now you've seen this car before because we've done a lot of work to it. 69s are kind of easy for people to justify investing in because of the rarity. Right here next to us is, is a red one that has the same problems as this one has. Okay, it's, it doesn't matter what GTV it is, they all have somewhat the same problems. One of the things you need to look for is right here on, directly under the door in the front and in the rear, you should see this expansion joint. If that expansion joint isn't there, that means this has been filled with body filler. If it's been filled with body filler, it's probably because it's hiding a great deal of repairs that are under here. 
This is common damage to one of these. It's not the end of the world, it's just an extensive process to make right. If it has been correctly taken care of, and this is filled in with body filler, you're not encapsulating, you're not stopping it, you are just allowing the damage or the rust to continue in areas that it becomes increasingly more difficult to resolve. So if you buy one of these, I'm actually okay with seeing plenty of rust down here. That's giving the moisture somewhere to go to escape the car. When it gets encapsulated in body filler, you're forcing the rust and the moisture to travel deeper into the subchassis of the car, which becomes extensive to repair. So, you know, this is this is common. This is actually not an easy repair to make because you have to get this gap right. These don't come from the manufacturer with the right angle folds to them, so you have to create this. So it's it can be very labor intensive to resolve this and make it look correct. Now this car in particular had plenty of things that kind of would have given you a key indicators as to what was wrong with it. Again, its rarity justifies its purchase, but there was things that kind of told the story that it wasn't all square when, when it was bought. You can see Johnny has replaced this entire piece. Um, he replaced it because it was extensively damaged like this. This whole front end has been hit. You can see that the buckling's up here and there was lack of shape here. Johnny's slowly bringing the shape back into place like it needs to be. But oftentimes, on a, for example, a 69, you will see an additional set of holes right here. That means that is a clip from a two liter car, which isn't correct for this car. That would be another indicator that you're looking at a car that has had some kind of damage in its life. The more you're aware of what should be there, the easier it is to spot when purchasing one of these. You kind of get an idea how bad this is because if you watch this horizontal line from this headlight bucket to that headlight bucket, it's fairly straight here. And somewhere over this inlet, it starts to travel up and it becomes fairly well significantly damaged. This car had a ton of body filler here. This is the body filler that was in it. Okay, so there's all sorts of ideas that you can certainly form from this whether it's worthy whatever the purchase price is. Um, again, because of the rarity of the, of the model, it certainly can be justified to purchase. It's just a matter of is the price right for what you're, you're being able to buy. So we're going to talk about the extensive metal work that we've been doing to get this front clip correct. Um, when we ground off the paint with a grinder, we realized there's nothing but body filler on this entire thing. As you can see here, there's a bunch of body filler still left over on this uh, side. So what we ended up having to do is we decided, hey, let's cut this out of a donor car, out of a donor car, and we're gonna replace it. So not only do we have to replace it, but we've gotta get the shape of the metal integrated back into this piece so everything flows nicely. So you can see I've got this piece tacked in. You can see a couple of tack welds that I've been doing here. This piece didn't look like this originally. Uh, There's no shape to this whatsoever. It was filled up with body filler as you can see up here. So what we've been doing is taking some old school body tools. You can see the shape of this dolly here. So what we do with the spoon, we stick it underneath here and we hammer on it. We do the same thing from the back side with this pick, we'll stick this pick from the back side and we'll hammer on it and we'll get a second guy with a dolly, a heavy duty dolly on the front side. So we're shaping this ridge around the headlight bucket back up into place. Um, it takes quite a bit of time and uh, we've got you know a couple days worth of work into this section alone. So you can see how much labor it takes to get to this point and we still got a lot more shaping to do. You can see that there's a huge buckle here. This is filled up with body filler. All this has to get hammered and straightened out. Not only straightened out, but it's gotta get shrunk back because if you don't shrink it, the metal's already stretched as it is. If you don't stretch, if you don't shrink it back down, this is gonna stay wavy and it's gonna be tin canning up and down on you like this when you're uh, driving down the road. So you can see the weep holes here in the lower valence section this is really, really important and critical because what happens is after time, debris will get in there and will seal up those weep holes. Now these are designed so that when it's raining, you're driving around, water's getting in here, moisture's getting in here, but moisture has a place to, to escape. If these are clogged up, 
this is notorious for getting rusted out. If this gets rusted out, the piece behind it gets rusted out, which is the radiator support. Um, make sure that this is unclogged at all times. Maybe take uh, an airline and blow some air through there, unclog all that stuff up because that moisture will sit there and it'll just rot away at your car down there. Okay, so now that we're starting to get into the, the deep, intricate complexity of rust and how it starts with some of these cars, um, this is not an uncommon thing for a GTV, so that's why you really don't want to take for granted, like we talked about earlier, the, the gaps that should be underneath the doors and whatnot. If you don't see those, this kind of stuff is going to be underneath there, I guarantee it. So this is a replacement piece that we would have. And though we're not going to cut off the whole thing, we are going to cut off a good portion of it to replace it from here down, okay? So, because we've done this quite a few times, we know where to keep our welds and to keep them hidden under the outer rocker skin. But effectively, so, we used to have to make these, and this used to take several hours to make, so it's just so much more economical now that we can buy these. And they're of the, the replacement gauge, so they're good to go. So we're just gonna cut off a section of this, replace what's needed, and then that part of this job will be done. Johnny? Now, as you can see, there's, some oxidation here in the middle of rocker, but that's just gonna be easy stuff to just patch up and repair. Down below, not much is compromised, so we don't wanna replace the entire thing because that's gonna be labor intensive. Now, uh, coming around the back, we're gonna show you guys what uh, uh, Jesus El Vaquero has been uh, working on here. You can see how he's got most of the rear section pulled out, and uh, we're ready to, we're almost ready to get the new section back in there. Now, of course, it's imperative to keep a car in this state where we've stripped a lot of the rigidity out of the steel onto the frame rack. The reason is because this is gonna keep it square as we're tearing the rocker sills out, the rear floor, the rear section. The sill system, as you can see, is, what keep, is keeping all of this intact and in place. Okay, so I wanted to say, what about GT? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's not good. Anyway, <laughs> okay, uh, how are we gonna do this? This is bad. Um, okay, so we've we've been. Uh, not laughing at anybody's uh, expense, but we're just laughing because we don't know how to approach the subject without it uh, sounding bad for somebody, basically. Um, but in a nutshell, it was just a couple of short years ago that you couldn't even buy a trunk floor. Um, but a few years prior to that, I'm talking you know eight years ago or so, you could have bought a exact floor. Now, um, it's basically one floor fits all. And obviously this floor is meant for uh, the most common production model car, which would have been a Camtail Spider. Um, I imagine this is probably a drop-in for that. But from a GT point of view, this is not even remotely close. So we're gonna have to do a lot of work with it in order for it to suit our needs. And that's okay. Um, but this is, gonna get, uh, this is gonna get really, really interesting. Hopefully it's gonna make good video. Um, but Johnny and um, Sean are going to have to work on this together, so you think about that for a minute. This isn't a one-man job, so now it's going to be double the labor to get it in and to make it actually work. Um, you can see where this can get fairly expensive fairly quickly, and it's not anybody's fault. 
Um, that's why it is so imperative that if you actually are thinking about buying any Alpha, especially something from the 60s and 70s, um, with that superior braking capability they had, you better thoroughly check that trunk floor. Um, because if it's buckled or if it's been compromised, oftentimes this is the only way you're ever going to resolve it. Um, this is labor extensive, I mean immensely extensive work. Um, because this floor, <clears throat> this is straight cut right here. The GTs have a continuous curve that goes all the way around, so we're going to have to cut away most of this. We're going to have to fabricate the very last section of this on a, the shrinker uh, stretcher, and we'll show you what that looks like when, when Johnny and Sean get at that. And because we're going to have to make this in a single piece, it's a two-man job, because you don't want the metal to twist while you're trying to shrink it and or stretch it. Um, so a lot of this gets cut up. We're going to have to do what's called cold caulking iron the entire perimeter because again it's not meant for this car there's angles here that don't even belong uh, to this car um, but effectively we have to make it look like it's part of this car um, and it, I just don't know how else to say it this is a lot of doggone work um, and it's much more complicated than that too because the other thing you have to be aware of is you see that the rear clip is off this car. It was compromised anyway. That entire quarter panel there needs to be worked. It's all been overworked and it's hardened, so we have to take some of that new memory out of it and reincorporate correct old memory into it. Um, so the rear clip has to be off in order for us to fit this, but the rear clip has to be on with this out in order for us to be able to match the correct perimeter for the piece, basically a lid or a rim that we have to set this on top of. This isn't a couple hours work. This isn't even two days work. Now mind you, two guys are on it. This is several days work to make this look absolutely right. Um, so you wanna buy a GT, you better check it out thoroughly. I'm not saying it's not worth you know the high dollars that these things go for. I'm not saying it at all because I own enough of them. I want them to be worth a lot of money. Um, but the reality of it is, is if you're gonna pay that kind of money for it, this better not be a part of it. Um, it just it, it's just what's right um, you feel for the customer you, you applaud his commitment but at the same time you go wow you know you feel bad for him because it's gonna take a lot of work to make this right do I have anything yeah you got anything well you got about an inch of gap right here between the floor and the actual quarter panel we have to make that fit right here on this corner. I don't know if you can see it on the video because it's so, so far away. I can almost stick my finger all the way through this. That's how far away it is. This contour doesn't even match. This is at a very sharp angle and this is uh, not so much. Same with the other side, same with the other quarter panel. Like Darren was saying, this right here is sticking out so this has to get trimmed. Like he was saying, we have to get that rear clip up in a place, mocked up in a place, to make sure that the trunk lid is gonna align with, uh, with the rear clip all the way around. Then we're gonna have to pull the clip out to trim this, put the clip back in, fabricate the piece that this is gonna be resting on that's gonna be welded onto the rear clip, put the rear clip back on, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna have to do that multiple times to make sure that this thing is gonna fit. We're gonna have to get the latch, the striker in uh, the deck lid, close it, make sure that everything lines up. It's gonna be a lot of work. That's only, that's only part of the stuff that we have to do. Then we have to go back around, and like Darren was saying, with the caulking iron, a couple hammers, dollies, a couple of guys, to make all this, to bang all this metal and shape it back up into place where we need it to be so that later on we can put a little bit of seam sealer around the edges and that's it. But uh, that means that the metal has to fit really, really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 